Hey everybody, stay tuned today where I'm going to be interviewing Yuri from the Azure Security Centre team and we'll be talking about Azure Security Centre, Azure Defender and also Yuri's going to share some of his tips on how to actually study and pass the AZ500 exam. <laughs> Welcome to today's Azure Unblogged. I am joined um, by Yuri from the Azure security team. So welcome to the show today, Yuri. Hey, thank you very much for having me here today, Sarah. Awesome. So security is one of those big topics that regardless of what size of organization you are and what technologies you're using, you kind of have to think about it, right? Um, but if a, your organization is starting their security kind of strategy and they're having to think about it, where can they actually start? What's the best point of um, starting for them? So assuming that they, this journey is starting with the cloud, right? They usually are migrating to the cloud. You, what they usually need is visibility and control. They need to be able to, as they start migrating those resources to the cloud, understand the secure posture of each workload how well configured those workloads are from the hardening best practice perspective and uh, making sure that the uh, over time, they continue to increase that security posture. That's where Azure Security Center can add a lot of value is by helping them to have the, the right visibility, the right control, and ensuring that they are moving in the right direction to enhance the overall secure posture. So you mentioned Azure Security Center, and I definitely want to talk about that because it's, it's a great tool. I've used it for some of my cloud developments and deployments with customers. But if a customer is moving from on-prem to the cloud, they probably have some security um, products or features or something enabled already. Does Azure Security Center complement that? Is it replacement? Where does that sit on that journey for a customer migrating, Yuri? Uh, it really depends, right? Uh, it really depends what they use. Because one thing that the, the, the customer have to realize is that by moving to the cloud, the threat landscape changes uh, quite drastically, actually. And uh, the workloads, the security controls that they used to have on-prem for those workloads might not be fully applicable. So some uh, secure controls they can preserve, like if, if it is a VM, then it's quite obvious that the anti-malware that they are using uh, can be preserved uh, on that VM. But if it is a storage, if it is a database, then they might start to looking at the options that are available in Security Center to replace the secure controls because the on-prem secure controls uh, are not probably applicable or does not really leverage the power of the cloud because the whole advantage of using native uh, secure controls in Azure Secure Center is because it's built in Azure. So it uses the entire elasticity, all the signals and sensors that we have available in Azure. And Azure Security Center is obviously native to Azure and works great with our Azure products, but it can also work kind of back the way, can't it, as well? It can also help secure and add some security protocols to your on-prem kind of resources as, as well. Is that right? Yeah. So they, uh, Azure Security Center, uh, in order to utilize in a hybrid environment, which means on-prem or even other cloud providers, they have to upgrade to Azure Defender. Right, used to be called Azure Security Center Standard Tier. Uh, after Ignite, we rebrand the whole uh, product uh, part of it. It's continues to be called Azure Security Center, but Azure Security Center now is a free tier. And when you upgrade, goes to Azure Defender. So the Azure Defender capabilities are the ones that can be leveraged for on-prem or different cloud providers as well. So that was a question I actually wanted to ask you because I heard Azure Defender mentioned at Ignite, but I wasn't sure if it was a new product or a name change. But I think from what you're saying there, it's actually just a name change in what we've already been offering customers. Is that right? Or if I got it wrong there? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I, I understand the confusion. Um, many people said, oh, you're retiring Azure Secure Center. And the answer is no. There is only one single portal. It's called Azure Secure Center. The change on the strategy, it was to keep a uh, similar experience uh, for the Defender uh, branding. So you have Azure Defender for servers, you have Azure Defender for Kubernetes, you have Azure Defender for storage, right? Uh, the branding is for the threat detection perspective. So now when you upgrade from free, there is no more the concept of standards here. 
now the concept is Azure Defender because now you have the whole package of threat detection for the different workloads. So Azure Defender is part of Secure Center. Azure Defender is not a different product. Azure Defender belongs to the Azure Secure Center umbrella. It's just the upgraded version. Okay. Cool. That clears that up. So thank you for that. Um, this year, I've noticed you've launched um, tons of new features and kind of um, additions within Azure Security Center. I think um, off the top of my head, I remember you added asset inventory and secure score and uh, multi-cloud support. Um, what's been your favorite new feature that you've added to Azure Security Center, Yuri? Um, I always look at Azure Security Center in two major pillars, right? The Cloud Secure Posture Management, CSPM, and the Cloud Workload Protection Platform, the CWPP, which is Azure Defender, right? So from the uh, CSPM perspective, I think that uh, inventory is, uh, the inventory is actually one of the, the major ones. Uh, it's really easy to, to search and to, to query for different resources, the, the current status, and also the integration with uh, Azure Resource Graph is very powerful. So you can start the inventory using that dashboard. And if you needed to, to go deeper and, and create different filters, then you can just click on Open Query in ARG and everything that you see on the screen will be used as a baseline to create a, a different query in ARG. So that's very powerful. Um, so I really like that capability as well. We recently released, um, and actually this was this week, uh, next, last week actually, uh, the capability to export the security score uh, to the log analysis workspace, which is uh, is very uh, uh, using the continuous export feature. So now you're using the continuous export, you can export the uh, the security score, which is also something that I like. The capability to query the security score via Azure Resource Graph is uh, is very powerful as well. These are the things that, from the CSPM perspective, it helps a lot of customers to um, have visibility and to track uh, progress over time. Right okay. now, from uh, from the uh, cloud workload protection platform, one of the things that we uh, release at Ignite is the continuous uh, assessment of uh, ACRs, uh, container registries, um, and we continue to to improve on our threat detections, right? We released uh, recently the uh, threat detections for SQL Anywhere, which means that you can have a, a SQL on your machine in AWS or GCP, and by onboarding that SQL using Azure Arc, you will be able to use Azure Defender for SQL. Uh, that's why we call it anywhere because it can be any cloud provider on prem or in Azure. So we're going to have threat detection no matter what. Awesome. Sounds brilliant. Now, I know you've written tons and tons of books in, in the past, and I think you've got a new book that's either out or coming out, Yuri. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, that The new book is the AZ500 uh, exam from Microsoft Press, the, the official one. It got delayed a little bit because uh, uh, towards the end of September, uh, we had another update on the exam. <laughs> uh, it was a minimal update, but we had to readjust the book. So the book was almost ready. It was actually going uh, to be released in October. Then they sent uh, this update. Say, hey, we have a new update on, <laughs> on, the, on the exam uh, objectives. And we have to basically uh, restructure a part of the book because they remove some stuff, they add some other stuff. Uh, but again, it, it caused delay. The book is now available for pre-order at MicrosoftPressStore.com and uh, Amazon as well. And the date to be released will be now December um, uh, between 25th and 28th, so around Christmas time. Awesome. Um, I have to admit the AZ500 exam is still one that I haven't attempted yet, Yuri. So um, do you have any tips for me in terms of what I should be thinking about? And if people are thinking about the AZ500 exam, who should be thinking about it? Is it for IT pros, devs, um, everybody? Um, what, what's your take on that? Well, ideally, everyone that works with uh, security should be taking the exam. That's point number one. But if you think broadly, everyone needs to know a little bit of security, right? Yeah. So ideally, the dev, when he is creating a, uh, his uh, application, he should think about security and, and develop a secure code. 
the exam is very well formatted for the IT pro uh, that also needs the security skills. So it's very infrastructure oriented. There will be uh, some automations questions or, or using PowerShell, ARM templates, things like that. But uh, it's very heavily on the infrastructure. Now, it is, it is a very broad exam. Uh, I know people that have been working with Azure for a long time that are currently on their third attempt for the exam. <laughs> Uh, I just received a couple of emails say, "Hey, I need I need this book to be out now because I already failed twice." And I was, I was like, "Okay," <laughs> um, uh, but it is a hard exam. Uh, to be very honest with you, it's not a, a easy exam. Uh, usually, people that are very experienced they they still surprise. I actually record uh, a podcast the with um, um, uh, Sarah Young and uh, Michael and uh, Mark Simons about this um, and they were just they just passed the exam like border edge because and they were like wow this is a very difficult exam and we are talking about uh, some folks that really know security so it's not an easy exam do not underestimate uh, uh, the the exam there's a lot of Azure policy and and I think the challenge of the exam is 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 the breadth right it's very broad the scope you have to know Azure Azure Firewall, you have to know Security Center, Sentinel, uh, Azure Blueprint, Azure Policy, VPN, networking. So it's very broad. It it's, it covers a lot of things, um, and all those things are covered from the infrastructure slash security standpoint. So do a lot of hands-on. Try to do some hands-on because if you just study from the theory perspective, you might. Uh, miss some points that you only see when you start doing some hands-on. Awesome. Um, I think that's what I'll be doing over my Christmas holidays then, getting some hands-on experience for AZ500. Um, thank you so much, Yuri, for your time today. I really appreciate it. And you've cleared up some of those misconceptions that I had around some of the products in our security range. Now, if you want to check out any of the resources or products that Yuri mentioned, please do check out our show description notes where we'll be posting some links. And remember to subscribe and like our channel for future comment, uh, content as well. So cheers, everybody. Bye.